A palindrome is a number that reads the same forward and backward. For example, 2442 and 111 are palindromes. If five-digit palindromes are formed using one or more of the digits 1, 2, and 3, how many such palindromes are possible? This type of question is a question that has two distinct ways to solve. The first way is going to take a little bit longer, and it's not necessarily the way that I would suggest you do it in the exam. However, I do think understanding the longer method is vitally important to being comfortable using the shorter method. So I'm going to start with a longer method. Now, what I would suggest here is that you think about five spaces. And I'm just gonna use letters here because it's simpler to think about than the numbers. So if I were to take one of these, if I have, okay, A, 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 then that's really just one choice. If you think about this, this, the outside number is reflected by the outside number, and the next number is reflected by that number. This number stays the same. Ultimately, we only ever have to consider the first three numbers because the next two are going to be reflected by this one and this one. So for example, I could choose A, A, A. I could also choose A, A, B. And then if I take that B and travel it through, I could say A, B, A, B, A, A, like that. So that's other possibilities that we have to consider. And then the last possibility would be if we have all different letters. It's A, B, C, like this. So if we have A, 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 what are the possibilities? Well, three possibilities for A, I've chosen one and then it's locked in place. So that's three times one times one or three. A, A, B, I've got three possibilities. The next one is the same, so it's locked. It's one. Uh, the last one is two possibilities because it could be B, it could be C. So that's six. Same for the next one. I've got three possibilities for the first one, two possibilities, and then one gives six again. And then again, B, A, A, three possibilities for B, two possibilities for A, and one possibility left is six. A, B, C, three for A, two for B, and one for C gives again six. Now, if you add these up, you're gonna get three, nine, 15, 21, 27 possibilities total. So you can easily do this in under two minutes. It's not a terrible way to solve the problem. However, it's not as fast as it could be done. So let me show you a quicker route. The second route also pays attention to the fact that we have the first three spaces available only. Let's just look at the slots. We have one, two, three slots, and then these two are just reflections of these two, as we see in the diagram above. For the first slot, we've got obviously three choices. The second slot, now we could have AAA, we could have ABA, we could have A, B, C. That means we've got three possibilities for the second slot. For the third slot, again, we've got three possibilities because we've got a possibility of A, 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 or A, A, B, or A, A, C, or A, B, C, or B, A, C, or any of these possibilities. So again, that's three. Now, this one is based on this one, so it's going to be reflected, that's just one. This one is based on this one, it's gonna be reflected, that's just one. So ultimately, we have 27 total possibilities. And that can be done much more quickly if you understand that we're just stacking up the possibilities and multiplying. I would, I would recommend that in the test situation, you do it in this shorter way. However, I do think that it's important that you understand the longer way to have a better conceptual grounding for how you do the question in the exam situation.